Today's Thursday, October the 19th. Um, it's about six o'clock. Um, call to order our regular select board meeting. First item is set adjust agenda. Um, I had, uh, <clears throat> when I saw the agenda, I thought that perhaps we should move item number one to just communication from the audience, but I saw the agenda kind of after it had been posted, and I don't know if we maybe have other people coming, so I feel like at this point we probably ought to roll with it the way it is. Okay. That works. Anybody else have anything to change, add, amend? All right, so we're gonna roll with the agenda as, as it is. Communication from the audience. Hello, audience. It's great to have an audience. Nice to it is up. lovely, even if everybody's here for a reason, that's good, because you're here. Um, next, uh, select board approved minutes from last time, which was October the 5th. I can motion to approve the select board meeting minutes of October the 5th as written. Second. Uh, any discussion, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Danny Hale, are you yes for the minutes there? Or? I was not there. Okay, you're abstaining. Yes. Got it. So, motion carries with minutes are approved. Um, next town manager report, Mr. Upson. So, uh, I've got, um, so we're starting the, the FEMA projects. Uh, they're called EEIs, which are essential elements of information are starting to trickle in on the portal. So we're beginning to compile that information to plug into the portal for reimbursement. Some of the emergency stuff is coming in first, like uh, debris, <coughs> cleanup. Um, most of the road stuff was lumped into one project. So hopefully those reimbursements will come in as we plug in those the essential elements of information. Um, so that's going well. Uh, they were back in town for Fisher Folly Bridge, um, Tucker Brook Bridge, and the retaining wall on South Main Street they looked at. Um, the damage, the doing damage assessments. Um, what was the third one? Uh, Green Brook. Green, the bridge oh, right. on our town line. Um, so they're just collecting information, documenting those damages. They mentioned that they, we might tie the pedestrian bridge in the abutment on that side because it was part of the wall. I don't know how that's gonna work, but that might be included in some of the, the d damage. But anything we do with them, <laughs> we spend first and it's reimbursed later? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Did they also look at the um, Hardwick Farms bridge? Yes. Okay. Didn't they look? Nope. No, they didn't look nope. at that one. No. No. Nope. Huh. Nope. Those were just the only four, four sites that we went to. Right. Okay. He made up two different slips for uh, the retaining wall one because he didn't know whether it was going to be under the bridge fire or if it was just for the retaining wall. Oh, okay. So he did them both at the same time, uh, whichever way he wants to go. Yep. Okay. Um, we held on Wednesday, Tuesday. On Tuesday, we held a disaster debrief. Um, Helen Beatty headed that up. We had uh, a lot of the stakeholders that were um, part of the disaster, the flood, and um, you know the days after the flood. So we debriefed on things that went well, things that we could do better, and strategies um, to update our emergency response plan. So that went well. Um, we learned a lot. We're, we're going to add um, you know, some of the communication items, the levels of communication that we have, um, we learned that there were some holes, so we're gonna to try to fill those holes the next time we have to do this, which I hope is not anytime soon. <laughs> will um, we see, I mean, I know I was there, but I had to leave early, so yeah. will the board see like, a, like either minutes or notes or outputs from that eventually? Yeah, we could put together because um, I think it's really just a, a, to update the emergency response plan, but um, we could we could do a summary of the meeting. That would that'd be really cool if someone, not okay. necessarily you, but if someone no, that's fine. wanted to do that. Because um, there were there was a bunch of stuff that came out, and uh, I thought it was good discussion. So yeah. and since I had to leave early, others would probably like to know. Yeah. 
like expanding the email notification, emergency notification, listserv, um, getting that out there so people sign up for it. And then just some organizations that felt that they weren't included in a lot of the communications. So we're hoping, like I said, to fill those gaps. And there were also talk about other things that could be improved, right? Mm -hmm. Things that we could have on hand and... Right, like uh, an emergency shelter. Like, the, well, the, the items that we would need in an emergency shelter. We have the shelter, but like cots, more food, more supplies. We kind of had to bubble gum some of that together. Um, the Vorak uh, marketing project, which is the, like the logo and the brochure is coming along. Um, there's been a couple group meetings. Uh, Pelts Creative has put it put a pretty good product together, so they're working on the final touches of that. So there's more to come on that, but that's pretty exciting because uh, we'll have like a um, we'll have a packet or recreation opportunities in Hardwick. A little map and with the map, yep. So it's, it's looking pretty good. And a lot of the rail trails looking pretty good. <clears throat> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then they started on the slate repair today. Oh, nice. Um, that's the lift out that's there. That's the lift's for. And then just an update on the wastewater plant. We're about roughly 15 loads in to the dewatering and clean out. Um, and we're probably like halfway, a little less than halfway. I just a guess to it just by looking at the sludge levels in the lagoon. But it's, it's good primary sludge. It doesn't smell all that bad, um, and the percent solids is high on the dewatering, so they're getting like 32 to 35 right now, which is good. So that should get better as they progress. Hmm. Yeah, but it's still really expensive. And do you have a prediction for the timeline of that project? Um, they're probably going to be another three weeks in the lagoon. Cleaning it out. You think they'll have it relined before winter? No. I don't think so. Okay. But unless it stays warm into January. <laughs> Oof. Oof. At this rate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay. But maybe that could change. Yeah. So. All right. We'll we'll see once we get closer to the end of the sludge clean out. Yep. So. All exciting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of sludge. Yeah. Looked like there was activity at the library this week, too. There was. They poured concrete today. They did? Nice. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But that, I'll let the library trustee give you that, that update <laughs> next time she's here. I oh, haven't come been, on. You I haven't been us. over there. All right. We are, we are shooting to do that uh, conduit install across West Church Street um, November 1st, right around that time. So. Good. Great. Yep. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Next up is road foreman report. Tom Fadden. Uh, short and sweet. Uh, last week uh, we ended up doing red board. Uh, you probably know about it. So I was going to ask you if you did it because Opie told yes. me I was going to be out of water and I never noticed that I was. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, because there's a couple other ones. <laughs> they really did Pardon? clean it. Yeah. I, I made sure. <laughs> you made sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> By the way. Yeah, so that's all I've done and over with for the, for the year. Uh, basically, last week we spent a lot of time up on uh, uh, Harvick Farms, uh, get stuff trucked up there and stuff. Uh, we got the bridge up there last week and stuff. Blocks and everything else. Uh, we did a couple roads just for a quick grading around the village. Um, then this whole entire week we basically went to Harvick Farms, putting the bridge together and stuff and ramping it up. And that road is officially open. Open. Great. It's one lane, it's only 12 foot wide, the deck's only 12 foot wide. Uh, you know, that's a little bit wider than what you see downtown from yellow to white line, mm -hmm. actually a 10 foot travel lane. Uh, so it is open now, so everybody can go through, even though everybody has been going through. But <laughs> One at a time though. Yeah, it's a lot safer now anyways. For us it is, at least we'll be able to plow through it now. Yeah. So, because if not, we were gonna make a situation down below where we're gonna have to add on a call work or turn around and everything else for the trucks and stuff. So, uh, so yeah. So basically, that's it. Um, next next week, we're 
Uh, it looks like the weather's good, so we'll be hammering out the roads, grading and raking them out, and trying to get ahead of stuff. And, and we've got oil changes and maintenance on the trucks, getting the plow frames on. Uh, the one ton is in, is in, in the body and stuff is getting put onto it right now. So hopefully we'll have that truck back in about three weeks. So wow, that'd be good. Yeah. What about the parking today? The what? You also did some signage downtown today. Oh, just a little bit of paint. <laughs> <laughs> just painting that signage. Yeah, they put they put the yellow, the yellow in the no parking area. Oh, it's highly visible. I have not seen it. I, I can give the police chief's report. Oh, okay. Yeah. They've written 12 parking tickets. <laughs> wow. That's not true. Yeah, it is. Oh, good. Yeah. Have they collected any money? Uh, yeah. Wow. Do we, right. do, do we have to think about that for our upcoming budget? Revenue? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. We do not. Yeah. We could balance the budget with parking tickets. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any questions for Tom? All right, I'm going to move us along to Hardwick Electric Report. We have Michael Ambrosino here. Good evening. Good evening. It's been a tough couple months. Yeah. So, you know, we've lost the Walcott plant in that storm, and we're in the process of trying to put the pieces together. Um, we're looking to go out and borrow about $2 million to put the plant back and do some other infrastructure work. Um, we're not even sure what the total cost is yet. We're sending a generator to a company in Connecticut to evaluate it. We get the turbine going to Ontario to someone who's going to resurface it and put it back together. Um, but we'll probably have a commission for at least, ah, realistically, nine to 12 more months. Um, so it's fortunate, uh, for, unfortunate we don't have the hydro plant to create electricity. Fortunately, the cost of electricity that we've purchased on the open market hasn't been that bad this year. So it didn't cost us too much money. But we've got to get that thing back in, in operation. So we're talking to local banks and we're talking to the Hardwick uh, Vermont Bank. Uh, Vermont Bank. Vermont, yeah. yeah. When I say Hardwick, yeah. I wish she had one. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're also looking to go for another rate increase to help pay for all the uh, expenses we're about to incur. <clears throat> we're putting that together. It'll probably take a little more time to just get all the numbers together, but that'll be going in soon. Um, our crews are working overtime a little bit. We're doing broadband poles and some of our poles that were damaged that have to be replaced. So that's all happening. We're probably going to bring some uh, crews from outside our group in to get some of this work done before the winter. Uh, what's some have going on here? Oh, the, the Woodbury property matter of quality has been filed with the, uh, legally, so we're going to see what, how that uh, resolves itself. Hmm. Um, and our finances are down about uh, four percent under budget, um, and our expenses are down about one percent. So it could have been a lot worse. Um, still for warm weather, and we're trying to just get the best prices we can to put this hydro plant back in order again. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of it financial. Um, tough times. We're getting through them. I think that covers most of the highlights of everything. Do we have confirmation of the meeting on the November 20th? Between the truck board and the HD? No. We wanted to do that, didn't we? <clears throat> Talk about waiting. Oh. You could. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I, you, yeah. I just remember that we talked We did about talk about it. But then there was some there was some stuff that came up that we wanted to wait on, but we can do that. Yeah. Would you sure. would you guys be willing to meet uh, do a joint meeting on the twentieth? Well, I'll find out. But yeah, yeah. I think it'd be great. But by then we have a lot more information than we right. right now. Okay. Because we get to the end of a lot. We of we were talking about at the last meeting um, pulling together a joint meeting for your November meeting. So we would do it. Are you meeting at four o'clock now? We are now. Yes. Huh? We are four you o'clock. Are? Okay. So it would be before four o'clock. Oh. Not after. Do you want to meet after? How long, how long do your meetings go for? Anywhere from one and a half to three hours. They, they go long sometimes. But if we know we're going to have a joint meeting, we won't have other people come to the meeting. Usually All right. Have, uh, 
Can you let me what know? What are we doing it for? Can you let me know if that'll yep. work? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Good to get the meeting going again. It's yep. been a while. Okay. Questions for Michael? Other than that. Thank you. All right. Thank um, you guys. Yeah, and I hope that the, the uh, financial position remains good enough. Yeah. We're, uh, I think we're pretty lucky so far, but things change quick. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks. Michael. I like to stay, but I'm going to go home and keep sneezing. <laughs> okay. I don't want you guys to get what I have. All right. Take care. You too. Um, all right, next up is item one, select board to discuss air and water quality concerns on Bridgman Hill. I know we've heard from you guys before, um, and I don't know what what jurisdiction or any kind of uh, role the select board directly plays, but certainly happy to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you give me a little bit better? So I can't hear anyone. That's because we're not talking. <laughs> okay. We're waiting. Uh, can, you hear us now? can you hear us now? Yes. Okay. Here okay. we go. To your question. You might have to come. Their speakers are here. Yeah. So mics. Make. Yeah. Careful. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you just stay right there. Okay. Uh, your question is why? Okay. Why here? Why the select board? Yeah. A um, couple reasons. Uh, one is uh, I gave to the state on this. And they said if this problem is termed as a nuisance, then the proper channel is your local government, not the state. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I'm here at the select board. Um, the other reason is, you know, you talked about the wastewater plant in town. So anything involving wastewater, air quality, water quality is a public interest item. And uh, part of being here is just making sure that the public is informed and the select board is informed. And uh, as far as this is a neighbor to neighbor, um, situation, but we're on our fourth year of it with no progress. So that's really the reason that we're here and why there was a letter is there's dialogue. There's not, it's not bad dialogue, but there's zero progress. And this was one of the worst years. So I would like to update the public and the select board just on what's going on. Uh, and that way, uh, anything moving forward, there's a background on it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it is an item that you should be aware of. Okay, so what's the issue? Um, this is not related to any farming or manure. This is strictly, uh, there's a bottling plant up on Bridgman Hill, um, and the wastewater is collecting in the lagoon with no, no manure in it. That manure, it collects, it builds up in the spring, it melts, it gives off vapor and gas, and then that gas um, is, is traveling. This started in the spring of 2020, when the issue first started, it was a problem because uh, waste, extra waste were being brought in. So it was an enhanced problem in 2020. That practice, to my knowledge, is no longer happening. So these, these are just the on-farm uh, bottom waste. What kind of waste is it? So when they're uh, pasteurizing and bottling milk, all the wash water. So this would be similar to, if you, could you go back to that picture? Mm -hmm. If you see the trucks from Cabot Creamery go around and spray uh, and disperse their wastewater as part of the wastewater plant for the creamery. This is the same, except this is an on-farm uh, enterprise right now. So there's no actual, you know, it's, it's the, the dispersal is all under the exemptions of being on-farm. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what does it smell like? It smells like, like wastewater, like sewage treatment plant. Okay. So, uh, and so this is one of the trucks, this is last December. Um, and usually they'll, they've done dispersal twice, 
but the odor is a problem before they do the dispersal and then after they do the dispersal. And then one of the reasons we're here and then we sent the letter is in 2023, in June, uh, they spread. It was a very large volume of water, so we saw like a big increase in it. And there was not a dissipation of the smell for really months afterwards, um, despite all the rain. So it really felt like we were hitting a saturation point with the amount. Uh, so if you go one further to, this is really a function of uh, wind direction, who's affected. So we've sent a letter to Bridgman Hill Farm. That was from uh, my family, the Fortman family. If you can zoom out a little bit, please. Um, the DeGrosso family, um, Andrew Meyer, and then uh, Nancy Shepard. Um, and really the two affected families here, if you see, this is the lagoon. Everyone familiar with where this area is? right up on Bridgman Hill. This is a wastewater lagoon. So this pit was designed for dairy manure, but there's no dairy manure in it. Instead, it's just getting a pure uh, wastewater into it. It builds up. Um, it starts to give off a vapor. Air, I think, you know, so anyone who's gone up uh, Bridgman Hill Road with their windows open in the summer you might have got hit by it. Because typically, these are your prevailing winds. In the spring, we get the uh, no wind, and I think it's a like heavier than air situation, so it tends to go downhill towards us. So we're the most affected uh, family. And then typically the wind is going to cut it right across the road. So it's off in this area, and sometimes that is right on the, the DeRocher family. Um, who couldn't be here tonight, they're working at the, the a funeral. Um, but uh, really, I've talked to a lot of the other residents. They're not affected, so I don't want to overstate that this is something that's clouding the entire hill. It's really a function of a very specific odor that's very foul. If you were to stand in its path, your reaction would be, I want to leave, and you would. But if, it's, uh, if it was in your home or on your back porch, or you're just going outside in the morning to work, then it becomes uh, a, a more serious situation. So we engaged with them uh, in 2020. Again, there's always been a good dialogue. They, uh, they recognize that there's a problem and they want to do something to solve it. But in 2023, the problem was worse than it ever been, and that's what brought us here. So um, that's the air quality issue. Um, if you can go one more, please. The, there's a concern for the future for uh, water quality. And the reason is we don't know. This is all done on an on-farm exemption. But there's no theoretical limit for how much wastewater is going to go onto Bridgman Hill. Uh, because this, uh, this operation potentially could bring, uh, at one point, uh, could bring in other milk and process it there. Uh, and it's also a purchase feed operation. So it's not limited by the land base to how much milk is processed there. So the public issue to be aware of is there a large wastewater dispersal and treatment operation on Bridgman Hill and it needs to be observed because there's really no theoretical limit to how much wastewater is going to go into the ground here um, because it's all being done on state exemptions under farm and that it's already a problem now and those are the, the main pieces that I wanted to get across. Sorry. Just a quick note, no, no. Um, are they only spreading in that in that Bridgman Hill area, or are they spreading in other places? They're too? only spreading on the fields that are associated with Bridgman Hill Farm. Okay, so in, basically in this map, the ones that are by the Shepherd Farm Lane, like those yes. big fields of the sides of Bridgman Hill. Lane. Yes. So and it's not it, a huge land area. It's not a huge land base, um, and. I can't give you any information on the, the volume of wastewater. I can tell you that trucks will run for three days of full day operations to get, the, to get that, and that usually is twice a year. So right now, uh, this is kind of the time of year things cool off. The problem is, is dissipated, and we'll just be waiting for when things thaw in the spring. If the water's built up, things heat up, and then we'll typically for us, there's no wind and there's a south wind, so we're most affected right in the early spring. And I don't know what it's going to be like then, because uh, we did receive a reply letter um, from a 
from Ryan Anderson on the farm, and the city's working on some things to put wood ash in there. So uh, again, a continued dialogue, but we would like the dialogue from now on to be uh, with the public, not just point to point, just because that was ineffective for us. So uh, the other thing we requested in our letter was some type of uh, third party testing of water quality. Um, being familiar with the area of Bridgman Hill, there's a tremendous amount of water under the ground. There's a tremendous amount of water moving under the ground, and we see that uh, all the time. And so there's a concern that uh, a complete saturation of the groundwater with this uh, substance could lead to water quality issues. And so what we asked for in our letter was the ability of some of the third party to just do testing. Um, because this potentially will shift from an above ground dispersal operation to a leach field type operation where it's being pumped uh, directly into the ground. And I think that that's something that uh, the public should know where it is and what the volume of wastewater that's going in there, especially from our experience from this year, that the ground is incredibly saturated. So really, uh, weeks to months after the spreading, there's, there's still a smell. How deep is the water table underneath the surface? Uh, that's going to vary. Uh, you know, this is a, a fairly large area of acreage on the hill. Uh, I can only speak to my experience of water is moving under the ground in Bridgman Hill. It's a unique geologic area. It's a scene between two very different uh, geologic zones. And we see water come out of the ground as you descend down the slope. A lot of times you'll see water coming out of the ground, um, but I can't, I couldn't give you a clear answer on exactly where the water is. So that's, uh, that's what I have for you. I want you to be aware of it in case you know things escalate. Uh, we want the discourse to be civil and, uh, and open and, and anyone else who wanted to speak on this to, to have the ability here to dispute anything that I'm saying or uh, so I, I did. Uh, reach out to Ryan and let him know we were doing this here. And he did respond um, to our letter that you received. And if you need a copy of that, I can get it from the select board. I think we have it. Yeah. The response? Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay, great. I mean, I read a response. Did everybody read a response? I came forward. Okay. Sorry. I did talk to our zoning administrator about the nuisance stuff. Because of the ag exemption, it really um, there's a lot under that umbrella in Vermont. Um, have you reached out? I, you mentioned in your letter about the Department of Agriculture and going down those routes. Yeah, I mean, best management practices. Yeah, we filed an initial complaint, and we're not accusing anyone of uh, violating any right. of those practices. Also, are breaking any law. Right. Uh, although the we do quality of life stuff is yeah the concern for us is again the no theoretical limit so if if milk can be brought in and processed on Bridgman Hill mm -hmm. that's an industrial not an agricultural activity um, the the property is under conservation easement to be a, a farm not a wastewater not a bottling plant wastewater dispersal area so I understand there's some exemptions that come um, but our concern is that uh, a massive increase in the amount of wastewater is all going to fall under this exemption, which is really designed for something that's tied to the land base itself. Right. So uh, that, that's the main message I want to get across. So I, I, I'm not saying that there's a water quality issue right now. I'm saying that we, what we observed in 2023 was disturbing enough that all the four different entities that signed this letter yeah. and decided to take our time out and to, and to address this because we're concerned about uh, the environment and the place where we live. Mm -hmm. so. And just quickly, you mentioned a third party doing some water testing. Is that something that you're hoping the town can help with or uh, the we, state? Is that we mentioned the land trust because there's conservation easement on the property. Um, and or Vermont um, agency that has a water quality division. So I think those would be the, the two that if, if permission was given from the farm yeah. and either one of those two entities was willing to just do some testing again, uh, that would help uh, as far as concerns for the public and for us. So. Thank you for coming. Um, 
Yeah, again, I don't, I'm not, not clear on what, if any, role the select board has in, a, in any kind of direct way, um, but it is good to, to know about it. I would just say I grew up on a dairy farm. I was very glad I didn't live there when my father went to an open lagoon. <laughs> I, mean, I feel your pain. Okay. Well, this is, no, I, 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 I want to respond to that um, because we've been around uh, manure and uh, I want to be very clear that this is not a dairy manure issue and what's coming out of the trucks is not dairy manure. Right. Right. And, uh, and that this is a new problem that's based on a new set of uh, operating parameters there where the removal of the manure from the wastewater is actually the problem uh, because it, it, nothing is there to, to mix with it. Right. And so I just I just want to be clear because I think some people looking initially at this issue will dismiss it and say, you just don't like spreading. That's really not what we're talking about at all. So, thank you for your time. Sure. Anybody else want to say anything? Or? Okay. All right, thank you, Steve. Um, next item is select board to consider appointing Jan Mueller to the Hardwick Equity Committee. Um, and I believe we had a letter of interest from Jan, and I believe he's also gone to. Yep. Um, he's participated in quite a few meetings, and um, the letter's not in the packet, but it was in the board folder. Yep. I can make a motion to appoint Jan Mueller to the Hardwick Equity Committee. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, that's everyone, so thank you. Will you let him know, Kayla? Yes, I will. Thank you. Awesome, so motion carries. Next, uh, item three, select board to consider approving a cannabis cultivator license for Michael Parker. Um, we had, is Michael Parker here? Might be him. Uh, we, had, uh, we had information in our packet. Um, nope. You're too late, Jan. We just nominated you, but thanks for coming. <laughs> we can read that one early. Read. Now you can join the meeting. So we're ahead of, we're ahead of schedule. Do you want to say anything? Uh, I just want to say that it's been, uh, um, thank you, and uh, I've been helping out in small ways up till now, and maybe even more going forward. I'm um, trying to bring whatever my, my experience and whatever to what they're doing. Things important work, and I look forward to it. Thank you. Maybe carry on. <laughs> Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, take care. Danny appreciates it when people come. <laughs> um, so, how long you can't hear it? <laughs> yeah, oh, well, he's gone now, too. Huh? Yeah, the sound of this meeting, your sound is really, really bad there. It's just I so everyone knows. Is. You sure it's not your ears? I told you. No, when I've, been, yeah. when, when I've been on Zoom, the sound has been very bad, too. It's not great. So, I don't know how to fix it, but at some point, we ought to try to... Well, wait, go back, so go like, back, go back. Eric and Opie, you are fine, but like anyone in the crowd or that gentleman that just was standing up, no, no, it's, it, it like, it tries to grab the sound, so it goes in and out, and you can't understand it. Mm. Oh. It's coming, a lot of the sound is coming from my mic here, so this is, this is the, the bottom line. Like whoever's speaking right now, but yeah. might as well not be speaking, because you cannot understand <laughs> it. <laughs> it picks nice up from here. <laughs> Okay. Can you go back to the... Does it make sense, just in case, since we're ahead of schedule, to move up our quarterly budget uh, in case Michael shows up? Yeah. Our Can you move bubble. the speaker volume? We'll move that all the way up. Oh, you think that'll help? I don't know. That's not the microphone. No, because the microphone's already up. Yeah. So sometime, I know this is not what we're discussing right now, but sometime maybe we should do a little session where we set this up, like during the day, just to try to debug it, set this up during the day, have somebody maybe go into Tracy's office and be on Zoom and try to troubleshoot, like how can we set this up so you can hear better? I, I don't know how else to, to do it. If we put, if we somehow put these well, into 
our TV into our Zoom? Well, the table, I can hear you. If you're sitting at the table, you can hear folks fine. It's just anywhere else other than right there at the table. Oh, so maybe we ought to also have another microphone and when somebody else is speaking, they need to approach the microphone. Yes. That, um, yeah, but that, your mics, the TV mics are, are completely separate from the Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. So we ought to have a Zoom, a mic. We need to link these mics into the Zoom somehow. This mics do go to the Zoom. They go through the board and go directly. This mic is what's picking up people in the room. And yeah, but that's for your TV broadcast, not the Zoom. Because this isn't what's broadcasted. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it, audio from your mics yep. goes all the way through here and goes back through Casey's computer and goes out to him. Oh, so really? He, he is yeah. getting your mics. Yeah. yeah. It's not through is the... That, yeah, that's, right. Did that just start? No, it's been like no. for a long time. That's, right. that's why your, yours is really good. It's just this mic isn't quite as good at picking up it. Oh. Danny, are you hearing what the explanation we're getting? No. No, he can only no. hear us. Whoever, he whatever, whatever is making noise other than Nopi, I cannot understand. <laughs> okay. Well, he's the one who's important anyway. So. No. Okay, so. No, but whoever is talking behind, you know, behind me, <laughs> I can't hear him. Okay. Can't, I can hear noise, but you can't understand the words. Yeah. So, maybe uh, words are not important. <laughs> so. Yeah. Government. I think I think maybe we should have a. Um, Your words are important. We ought to we ought to add another mic, and okay. then when when people yeah. are speaking, we have to just be like a little more um, just deliberate. Talk to the mic. Deliberate. Yeah, yeah, you have to talk to the mic. Yeah. Okay. This is good. It's learning learning experience. So I had suggested that we talk about the quarterly. Uh, we're ahead of schedule, so maybe we talk about the budget update just in case Michael Parker comes to talk about his. Did I ever suggest that we take times off the agenda? <laughs> you did. You have. <laughs> Multiple times. I mean, I think we ought to just roll ahead because we have um, item three. I mean, we have the information he. Right, great. I thought we appointed it. He's got a, a uh, his zoning licenses. He went through DRB. Right. So we have no reason to turn him down. We have no, even if we wanted no to, to, we have no him. grounds to turn him down. We've been around this thing before. There's like, he's been through the process and we rubber stamp. I make a motion, I make a motion that we give him what he needs. Get it done. Second. And, and what, what Danny means by give him what he mean, needs is to approve a <laughs> cannabis <laughs> cultivator license. <laughs> Correct, Danny? That's what you meant. Said. That's what you said. Yes. yes. I move that we approve his cultivator license yes. from Michael Beautiful. Parker. Sorry, and you seconded? I did. Okay. Any discussion? Oh, I didn't put that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Danny, are you an aye with us? I assume you are. Yeah, it was a yes. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, item four, um, business manager Casey Rowell to provide a budget update for the first quarter of SY24, which would have just, which just closed end of September, right? Yeah. So we're not really that far from the end of the quarter. We're nail it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty good. <laughs> You've got this in the back of your packet. <laughs> Oh, we do? We do. I mean, I don't have to look all the way up there. I like I to look up there. I up there so that other people, oh. like, they can be showed on the screen, so. Casey, may I just say that oh. it looks fine on the screen with that blue <laughs> on the paper. It's you really hard there. to read. Okay. Um, I think it's okay. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if I had, I wouldn't have said anything. I know. Um, so overall, our revenues from the general fund are on track to meet budget. Um, we always run into this, but the way our system shows is the actual tax revenues are really a build amount, which we'll pay the school. Um, so the Casey, I lost the, uh, it flashed and now all it says is Zoom. Oh, you lost the, you lost, lost the video? The video. 
Yeah, I, well, I got you guys, but uh, oh, the, we don't uh, have... doc, the document is gone. Oh, maybe stop the sharing. The screen is so zoomed. Okay, I'll just stop the share and try again. Just a moment, please. Oh, there's me. <laughs> Back. What about there now? There you go. Yeah. yeah. Good okay. job. Thank okay. you. Sure. Um, so basically, um, if we assume that we've collected 25% of our tax revenues, um, we would be at 28%. We should be about 25%. So we're we're on track. We're three percent okay. over. Um, we've got a couple categories that are a little bit higher than expected: copier fees and zoning permits. Highway revenues are higher than expected at 63%, and that's basically because the state has sent us three out of four of our quarterly highway payments, and we don't really know why. I just speculate they might have done it to assist with cash flow due to flood damage. Oh. That's what I think. They yep. never really explained it, but they basically have sent us three out of four, and they normally do like July, October, January, April, but we've already received three out of four, so I think that's, maybe it was a... They're Just trying to, to be help. nice. Yeah. I think that's great. Yep. So um, so that's why that's kind of ahead of schedule is just because we've received most of those payments. Um, so like I said, um, if we assume that we've collected 25% of our expected revenues, we would be at 28% right now. So we're on track. Good. Mm -hmm. Any questions about the revenue before I move on to expenses? Okay. Okay. So... Okay, so expenses. Um, we do, I, I did take highway flood expenses and separate those out. We do have some other flood expenses, but they're not huge like the highway. We have a little bit in fire department and we have a little bit in buildings and such, but the majority here, besides the wastewater um, fund, that, which is an enterprise fund, um, they're all small basically so I did separate out the highway so if you back out the flood expenses highway is at 19% um, of course we haven't went into winter yet but um, overall factoring the flood expenses we're still at 28% but if we took those that big lump sum of 228,000 in the highway department out we would be at like 21% and we do expect to recoup those mm -hmm. um, from FEMA. It's going to take some time, but um, you know, if if that does happen to come in before the end of the fiscal year, then as of right now, we're in pretty good shape. We've been very fortunate that um, the town has the cash flow to support these all of this road work that we had to to bring the roads back without borrowing. So, um, yeah. Can you comment on our uh, our cash position now? Like we're still, are we still good even after having this unexpected mm -hmm. other yeah. flood expenses? Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know that's it's because people are good about paying their taxes, and when they a lot of people when they first get their bills, they are already paying them. They're starting to make quarterly payments. Um, water and sewer customers are paying pretty well, so that really helps us. So we appreciate that. Yeah, we do. Because it does help us to not have to borrow money and keeps the cost down. So yeah, no, we're we're still plugging away. We do still have a fair amount of money to spend in on like through the sewer fund to bring the plant back up yeah. to pre flood conditions. But it still appears that we will be able to do that on our own. Um, okay. and if we don't get that reimbursed before the end of the year um, basically, we'll just create a receivable on our books because it's money that we're going to get back. Um, it just may not come in before the end of the fiscal year. Um, David and I are confident that as we work through those EEIs and the grant portal, some of that stuff we're going to start getting money back, like the Fisher Folly Bridge and whatever, because we have all the documentation and those are done. So once we get that input, we should be able to start seeing some funds, some reimbursement for that. So in the road stuff yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's great so just a really good question about that and we can go into it further later but because those were unanticipated expenses do we just basically put that money back into the general fund or to future like we'll have to update a lot of those culverts later on like we basically made the changes that we needed to make but then we're gonna have like 
do we essentially figure? that's gonna just it'll just be like a revenue like we'll a reimbursement expense, revenue right. that okay. offsets the expense that you cancel each other out okay. yes well from not 75 percent for them to, and then another 12, 12 and a half from a half. the state okay so we'll have we it's like seven and a half percent that we have to pay okay. which is pretty small in the grand scheme of yeah, things. It is. yeah yeah it is. great so um and the other thing i did talk to the family guy when he was here about the price list for materials so he was going to look into it for us because back in 07 <coughs> when the flooding occurred back then they had a price list on materials like we would take material out from a pit you know processing wise and stuff it was four dollars but then they would reimburse you thirteen dollars per yard of what you were getting out here uh, Oh, they just had an equipment rate rates. for some stuff. The right, other one exactly. is equipment right. rates. Where um, I do have the updated equipment rates. So, for example, yeah. when we use an excavator, we get X amount of dollars per hour when we're using our equipment. Um, well, that's good. Yeah. Yes, and and so the materials, it's the same idea. It's, it seems that the reimbursement rate is often higher than what we actually paid because it's. I think we think it's like a national average mm -hmm. yep. that they reimburse at. So. We've been Those. trying to find that list, and yeah. speaking of which, um, Tom pulled out some data, and the last big flood that Hardwick had in 2007 yeah. was on July 11th. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so and this was like the 10th in into the 11th. That's very ironic. Interesting. So, so yeah. Yeah, so, so this is just the cash. That's so, what I was just going to ask. Yeah, yeah, so all the numbers we've been giving you are just the cash out. So that doesn't count doesn't equipment count. time, right. uh, Correct. people time. Well, people time is just only overtime. Oh, right. Is okay. Yeah. But equipment they, time is reimbursable. Yeah. Yes. And, and our material. And our materials. Yeah. But the budget would reflect overtime because that's the. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The overtime is reimbursable. Right. Hmm. All right. Which would be like the first couple of weeks after the flood. Yeah. So the, the, to me, the takeaway message is that because the town is in, is in a good fiscal position going into this, we're still in a reasonably good fiscal position and we're fully expecting FEMA to reimburse a large percentage of mm -hmm. the flood expenses. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Um, and we've been kind of monitoring it right along. Um, because the bond bank came out where, or they were developing a loan fund basically um, to help um, flood towns. And it was very favorable rate. It was like half a quarter to a half a percent. And um, it was a seven year term with two years of interest only and whatnot. And they reached out to us to ask, but um, sort of looking at everything we feel that we're okay because we're kind of other than the wastewater plant we've got some more expenses to incur but we're in good enough shape where we won't need to we don't need to get a loan so mm -hmm. that's a really good feeling mm -hmm. yeah so great yeah um so yeah that's that's the first quarter of 2024. The auditors were here the last week in September. Um, I haven't seen like a draft or anything. I know they had some work to finish up. I would expect maybe mid-November, I might have the first draft of that. And I would say probably by the beginning of January, probably a final on that. We definitely dipped into the fund balance. I mean, we anticipated dipping into it like 175,000. I think it was probably off the top of my head closer to 260, 270,000. Um, so, um, but yeah. So, but ultimately, I mean, we have it. We're we're okay. Um, so, we appreciate that people are paying their bills and helping the town to continue running, so that we don't have to borrow money. Yeah. Did. Uh... <clears throat> The auditors interview anyone on the select board this year? Not me. They didn't talk to me. They weren't happy about how we dispersed ARPA. Yeah. They were. They weren't. They were well, not. What, but what about it? It would be nice to have that fund. 
those funds right <laughs> yeah. now. But. Um, they felt that there should have been maybe sub-grant agreements with everybody that we gave money yeah. to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we did have, uh, it's just a really good question about that. We did have, uh, I don't know, I mean, I don't think anybody signed anything, but there was a conversation about if funds Reports. weren't spent yeah. by 2024, then they, like if they weren't requested, or I don't know if all organizations have taken the money, but if I, I remember exactly. having a conversation. They have, we have just, yeah, actually they have, everything is dispersed except for the $9,900 that we're putting into revenue this year. I just okay. need to make a transfer on that. So, so yeah, everything is dispersed. But we did ask for a report for did. town meeting. Yeah, we did. Yeah, have they been turning in reports as requested? Well, the we, recipients? Um, we didn't have like, anybody that did anything for, we did a write up ARPA in the town report, but this coming year, anybody who's spent their funds should be prepared to do something yeah. to have a page. We'll have another ARPA page in the town report again, ideally. So their concern yeah. was the process, was the paperwork involved? It was that, um, right, because, because we're, we're going to need a single audit, which means we had more than $750,000 of federal grant expenditures, including ARPA. Um, it meant that like once we gave that money to them, we sort of lost control of that. Um, and so um, they would have liked to have seen like a sub-grant agreement, like mm -hmm. sub-granting the money to them where there was covenants that they had to spend a certain way, which we would have had a lot of sub-grant agreements, but yeah. Um, it's, a like yeah. A, it's a paperwork issue. Where he, you know, they said that one thing that they saw was a lot of towns just would be like, okay, we're going to spend this on highway salaries, we're going to spend this on police salaries, and just boom, it was done. They said they spent it on X, and then it was done. Um, but yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't... Um, at this point, we haven't been told we're gonna like we're not penalized. We didn't like misspend the funds or anything like that. Right. They just didn't really like the way that um, that we went about it. I guess. They're not the IRA. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's their prerogative. But but we, I mean, we followed the rules. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the rules um, that we made. No. <laughs> no, the rules. No. Yeah. No. That's they not didn't true. say we had to do that. Right. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. But yes. So, Casey, I really appreciate these um, concise, um, the one-pagers for, right. for the expenses and the um, revenues. That's really good. Also, really appreciate the annotated detail that, you, that we got in our packet. That was, that's nice, too. So, just thank you. I think that's a lot to look at for people, so it's nice to just have a little summary. It's right. easier to talk about with the summary. Yes. But I do appreciate the the detail and your annotations on that too. So, thank you. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna move us along. Next is item five, select board to discuss the current and future classification of the lane. You switching hats? I wanna be able to. <coughs> um, somebody else needs to lead this discussion because I, so I, I'll start. Well, throw out the lane apparently is um, uh, is some sort of traveled way behind, uh, parallel to South Main Street, uphill and behind most of our Main Street uh, buildings. And um, that's what I know. And it's currently not maintained by the town. Correct? It's currently not. Currently not. Okay. Currently not. Okay. I mean, the, the road sign says private, PVT, so private. So part of it has been, I, it, from what I understand, Claudia Goal has taken on a lot of work with the part that's behind her two buildings, the two buildings, and then the part that she owns, her parcels. But the other part of the lane is pretty well not maintained. It's pretty bad up there. How's it used? Um, and it, well, it's parking um, of people that, residents in the buildings there, park up there. <clears throat> um, so both the flower basket building and the building 
1874 building or whatever mm -hmm. that both of those have the least amount of like space between the building itself and the ground that the lane sits on mm -hmm. and so it seems like they may be starting to have some issues with water and snow melt and like now there's some sandbags behind uh, Nora's building, behind the old co-op building. There are some sandbags and stuff that are supposed to like help with the melt this spring. You know, they're, so they're trying to ward off stuff. So, and they're trying to get together around planning, but I brought this to the select board just because it, if there's issues with that road, it's in the, it's in our designated downtown, and it's, it, it seems like it's important to at least make sure that there's uh, some level of maintenance happening so that we're not threatening those buildings on Main Street. I mean, on the other hand, though, aren't the, the, it sounds like the buildings, like where they come back to the lane, that's the private property and land yeah. of those buildings. So if they feel they should take steps to um, mitigate water intrusion or change drainage, it's their prerogative, right? It is, but yeah, I just... Is it one way or is it double one. wide? It's one. Yeah, it's it kind of varies because there's parking on it's, you know, they're, informal yeah, they're parking. pulling in and they have some nose in parking along part of it, and then it just kind of comes to an end, it's like a dead end mm -hmm. um, sort of circle behind where that entry to the sort of behind the clip joint almost, isn't it? Yeah, that building, that Lamoille Housing Partnership mm -hmm. building, and they have an entrance back there for both the Bemis block and that has the entrance but the, I looks like they all have an entrance in the back I just could that be designated as a delivery area no that's a great idea no I don't think it is <laughs> because of the hill and there isn't any way for a truck to turn around up there UPS does not go up there back FedEx out. doesn't go in there no they don't go in there because they have to back, they would have to back up the hill in order to yeah. come out in that ridiculous intersection. No, I, yeah, I think that's just begging for more problems. I mean, you know, the problem, the bigger part of the problem is there's a fair amount of mold. It's why we lost AT and T. Um, that building has some mold issues that are apparently not being addressed, and so I just. I wanted to bring it forward just because people are asking the downtown partnership about it and what we're going to do to help them with it. And I don't foresee any way that the downtown partnership can really help except that it is in the designated downtown. So if there's some way to, you know, help lead people, lead those building owners to some sort of, I don't know. So is it basically right now? And owned, it just seems owned, odd that there's like a private sections, road back there that different the town sections are owned by each property owner. So mm -hmm. like it, the, yeah. the property lines just go straight back. Mm -hmm. That sounds fun. Yeah, I mean, I sent an email that showed yeah. the, you know, where the property lines are, mm -hmm. where the designated mm -hmm. downtown is, what the, and you know, it's, a, it's just a real gray area. And if one property owner doesn't do what they should do, how does, how does, mm -hmm affect everybody else. If it was, let's say, a residential private road, typically they would do like a private road maintenance agreement mm -hmm. where right. each of them pays X amount that covers mm -hmm. plowing and potholes and whatever. So, I mean, if a group of them got together and did a private road maintenance and they each put in mm -hmm. so much a year, then they could build that fund up to do continuous And then they could just hire one one firm and to do currently maintenance. Three. Are there currently three? Mm -hmm. So it seems like they should; those property owners should organize. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think they are trying to, but I just thought, you know, as long as, as long as we, you know, the select board knew about it, mm -hmm. it just seemed like, you know, they should get the same advice from everybody they talk to. Yeah. So I think <clears throat> we ought to talk about it. Okay. The advice, the advice that I gave to them was they should get together, they should um, have a discussion, 
about um, the property where there's a catch basin, um, which is a Wilmo Housing Partnership, so Alliance is their property manager. I should talk to them about the catch basin. And I'm like, they can come and talk to me or the town, but mm -hmm. it's all private property. Yeah. There's the deed, um, the town clerk found language in 35 feet in from um, Holton Hill, which is about to the telephone pole, which is about to Claudia Gould's second building, mm -hmm. where the t it was laid out as a as a right away for the for the town. Not beyond that, mm -hmm. there's nothing in those deeds that say that it's a town that there's a town right away or an easement for the town. So it sounds like you're on the right track trying to get people yeah. together. I just, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of it because right. it does seem like it's kind of a, um, especially, yeah, because, uh, yeah, for whatever's happening at that 1874 building with the mold, um, residents, people in the apartments are complaining about mold, but they haven't invited a health officer in, so right. they're on their own with yeah. that until they do. So, I don't know. Speaking of which, does anybody want to be health officer? <laughs> well, well, that was dry after that water line broke in there. That's not the building she's talking about. Yeah, it's 1874, 8. AT&T, we had to actually shut down the sprinkler system in there. Oh, that, that oh, I thought you there. meant, I thought you meant the last fire. Yeah, no, no. Because that thing exploded upstairs and it just ran through the AT&T store all the way up through. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because he ran out of heat. Pipe split. Oh. So that's a wet? Huh? That's a wet system? Yes. Yeah. Who's, who owns that building? I don't know. Oh, Changed hands. Sell it too. Yeah, Larry doesn't want no. no. No, Larry sold it. Anyway, that's, okay. that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's right. just to keep it on the, and then as far as them meeting and getting together, I'll just, yeah. Yeah. Keep sending them to you. If just, I have a, just a question about the downtown designation. Where, in a situation like this, how would the downtown partnership not be effective in in talking with building owners in the downtown? I mean, that maybe would be. I mean, I, I just don't know. Okay. And we're in the process of hiring a, a executive director. So maybe that's like I something mean, they could take on. It can't be my job. No, yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not putting it on you. I'm not <laughs> yeah. putting it on you, yeah. for sure. But but this is like, this is right up that, right. like that's and the reason potentially, why. Potentially, since it's really on that line, I mean, potentially those building owners could take advantage of some of the benefits of downtown designation right. to really do the right thing in that. Yeah. Yep. On that property. So maybe when there's a <coughs> the downtown the executive, sorry, executive director on mm -hmm. board, maybe that's a, a task. To help with some. And I'll definitely help. Yeah. Liaison yeah. And stuff. Yep. All right. Thank you for bringing that to us. Um, next select board report. We'll keep working on it. I'm going to throw out a thank you to everybody who came out for the, must have been like the 20th annual pumpkin walk. Um, it was pretty well attended, roughly 500 people. Wow. Uh, and <coughs> roughly 400 pumpkins all carved. Thank you, Beth LaCour, art teacher extraordinaire at the elementary school for coordinating all that carving. Hmm. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. Um, any new business? Uh, well, select board reports. So the townhouse is winding down to the end of the season. Um, we have uh, one more event in there this Friday night. It's the psychic medium who was very popular last time, very well attended. Just saying. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Is that like a show, or is that like you get an appointment to sit with them? You, it's a public they uh, pick it's a you meeting out? where they where she receives information yeah. and talks to people in the audience. Oh, but there, it. but you are like sitting as an audience, you know, yeah. like go up one by one or something. No. Okay. 
they levitate people. Yeah. Well, that's see, that would be good. There's a little bit of show. I mean, she's good at it. She's, yeah. She's kind Who of. Who is funny. it? Um, Rebecca. Okay. Can't remember her last name at this moment. Tomorrow night. It's on Tomorrow the town night. townhouse website if you want to go look cool. her up. She's got credentials. Just saying. A lot of um, people do. <laughs> and Sally Fishburne has started to work on the doors to windows swap. We were at the DRB, the townhouse was at the DRB last night for our conditional, what it was, variance or whatever for the never construction project that will be going out to bid um, early in November. Oh, that's exciting. And um, so in the spring, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have hired somebody and yeah. We'll nice. Start. Yeah. It's going to happen for the Another addition. project. The yeah. yellow bar, the library, and the uh, yeah. town be great. And the wastewater plant. And, and the wastewater plant. And, and the pedestrian bridge. bridge. Yeah, right. And we're, we're getting a roof tune up. We're going to have a lot going on. Town. There are a lot of trucks in town, just saying. Yeah. A lot of people looking for parking places. Shh. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, any there other select board reports? On Street today, just saying. Yeah. Any new business or old business? Because they know we're out. I have out. a really quick new business, just a quick consideration. Um, there is a Hardwick student who um, wrote a poem about the flood, um, and it was submitted to the Young Writers Project, and they it's being featured this week in the Times Argus, and it's a very thoughtful poem. And I talked to the parent about potentially putting it in the town report. Um, I'm not sure where it would go exactly, but I wanted to bring it up to the select board as a cool. possibility. Can you send it to us? Yep, back cover. Yeah, or some, or somewhere, but it's oh. really, if it will fit. In the back yeah, that's a great idea. So I can circulate it, I just wanted to yeah. throw it out there. Okay. That's Where cool. Is that Time target. Oh, the uh, Young, Writers Young Writers Project. Project. That's cool. A talented young writer. Yeah, very. All right, anything else? Hearing nothing. Hearing none, let's adjourn. Thank you, everyone.